How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday morning, April 8th, 2025 is the date, 10.51 a.m. That's California time here. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows, uh, looks like a four-pointer there in the green flag. Well, it was a green flag down across the, uh, uh, look like the Nicaragua area. Also some movement in California. Here is the last 24 hours of earthquake activity on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out, uh, see what's going on out here across the West Coast this morning. As uh, far as California activity goes, quite a few red circles out here indicating some newer movement in the last hour. But the majority of these quakes uh, appear to be on the microquake size. But we do have some interesting movement here across the Garlock Fault shear zone. Showing some activity out here today. Nothing big, just all looks like it's below the 2.0 level uh, as far as anything above the 2.5 level well let's see what we got one down here this is from yesterday here that little 2.6 just off the southern branch here of the san andreas fault this has been a little interest here recently uh, due to a little swarm that's been occurring out here in the last 30 days got about 70 earthquakes of various magnitudes uh, i believe let's see here oh there was a three-pointer back there uh, late last month, I think we had a, uh, yeah, I think that was the largest quick little three-pointer. But today, where I should say within the last 24 hours, one 2.6 in that region. Just keeping an eye on that because that's, that is just right off the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch. And of course, we all know that's locked and loaded. Want to keep our eyes out and open and on guard if we see uh, any unusual activity out there. And it's, it's definitely been showing some signs of stress out there in the last 30 days. Of course, you know, it's been building up for over 300 years, and this area is capable of producing an 8.1 earthquake. As far as the Parkfield segment of the San Andreas Fault, that's going to be this little segment down here. A number of earthquakes there yesterday. Well, I should say just one. It's been a couple, though, in the last seven days, if we bring that up. Got about 14 earthquakes there, and a little sequence of events right on just north of the Parkfield section in between the area where it starts to creep and lock up in terms of that uh, stress being um, achieved there on the plate boundary. So continue to keep an eye on that as well. Uh, Northern California, the Bay Region, pretty quiet, not a whole lot of activity. Western Nevada, still seeing all that movement up there, pretty much in a linear fashion all across the uh, the state of Nevada. Nothing big, just uh, some signs of stress out there. That's all got to do with the plate boundary out here along the California region. Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet, nothing major going on. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, uh, well, see what we have. We'll go double check that and make sure. Today is the 8th already. Goodness. Nothing major. Looks like uh, just some wind events out there. Really no earthquake activity. The wind's going to be here in the darker blue. Yes, the seismograph stations out there do pick up the wind on occasion. Oklahoma, gas and oil fields getting hit out there also in Texas. Down across the uh, Georgia area, a couple earthquakes outside of Harlem, Georgia, which is outside of Augusta. Most of these here from yesterday. I don't, I don't recall these being on the map last night, so it looks like these were added after the fact. Sometimes it takes, you know, a review, a human review, uh, following earthquake activity in uh, locations that may not really experience a lot of earthquake activity. But there's a little bit upper one range out there across Georgia. They've had a lot of rain out here in this region, so it could have something to do with that. Nothing going on there across the New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, last 24 hours of earthquake activity. The largest event goes to yesterday. This little, I should say, moderate 5.8 here across the Sumatra area, just off the north coast there. Uh, about 11 miles deep uh, so far today though after midnight 5.4 up here across the japan area or yeah japan region still keeping an eye on the nankai trough here nothing showing up on it though for now uh, as far as the usgs statements go really not seeing anything on the emsc model you know maybe one earthquake here if we look there's a 4.4 at the northern end here just at that uh just as the subduction zone ends so that's going to be right about here, and that is visible as far as the subduction zone goes on the oceanic crust map. I do like this. I just wish they would add the names back here. 
uh, far as the subduction zones and the trench zones. They used to have Izu Trench or uh, Izu Trench up here, Mariana Trench, uh, Japan Trench, Kuro Kamchatka Trench. All that is missing off their maps here since they re redid it. Hopefully they'll get around to it. Um, Alaska, really nothing major going on up there. Hawaii, a little bit of activity stirring up around the Lohe Seamount from yesterday and today, it looks like. A couple more earthquakes after midnight. 3.4 and a 3.1. Nothing major or unusual going on there, but we will double check the Kilauea Volcano site. See if uh, anything is changed here since last night. Still got some volcanic gases going on there. Looks like, uh, well, did we enter into the eruption stage here? Looks like we did. I'm guessing sometime late last night there, this thing uh, kicked back up into eruption stage. Episode number 17. I believe it's episode 17 here. Yeah, it looks like uh, around 3 a.m. Hawaii time there. Got uh, some eruption activity going on. Across those uh, little craters area. Those two craters. There we go with the uh, depletion of magma from the summit area. Right. Obviously during an eruption that's going to go down. This is the inflation chart. Here's the past month. Each inflation obviously leading up to an eruption. This one uh, a little bit lower in terms of the accumulated volume down below. So... I thought we'd have at least uh, maybe another day or two to match some previous levels observed, but uh, not the case. Either way, um, looking at the volume of magma, though, it does not appear to be anything um, too crazy. Looks a little light, if anything, in terms of the, uh, the fountaining and stuff going on, but it is the eruption. I believe that's number 17 here that we've observed in the last couple months last few months i should say all right far as the rest of the globe goes let's go ahead and see what's going on here across the area aside from the typical clustering out here in the crunch zone you can pretty much always see that type of activity new zealand uh, some threes out there today really nothing big some quiet movement out across the tonga trench quiet movement lack of movement here around the tonga trench and the fiji area for now but this has been quite active recently um so it's okay to see that go quiet for a day or two. Uh, a little bit of movement out in the uh, Pacific. That's off of the plate boundary there. 5.2, fairly uh, unusual location. They have this uh, at the Southeast Central Pacific Ocean. Again, away from the plate boundary. Maybe a fracture zone out here somewhere. Uh, which is currently also missing from the map here. These all used to be marked with different names and that is not the case out there now south america a couple smaller earthquakes down there really nothing big the atlantic ocean uh, aside from yesterday's 5.3 just a couple smaller quakes on the board there really nothing major give a quick glance here at the space weather activity or lack thereof Kind of quiet. A uh, little bit of choppiness going on here. Some instability going on. A little bit of seafloor activity. Very low grade seafloor activity. Uh, I'm guessing it's from one of these uh, sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. More likely 4054. Let's take a look here at the latest magnetogram image. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. It might be this area. There's a little bit of filling in between this gap which uh, is a good sign that it may be going to through some type of redeveloping stage here that may enhance some flaring activity, but not, uh, I don't think it's going to happen in near term. Probably once it gets back over here across the western limb and out of sight, out of mind, but really not a whole lot of uh, flaring potential right now. Um, yeah, looks like we may be entering into a little quiet period of space weather activity. Let's see what's on the far side here real quick. This is put out yesterday, so, well, fairly recent. We do have one sunspot here. That's a, probably a little bit more over here, closer to the eastern limb. This is the eastern limb. Sunspot's coming off the far side. This is a visible disk, what we observe here from Earth. 
and uh, maybe a little sunspot there. We'll we'll take a look at that here. Maybe tonight could be in view. Doesn't look like much though, um, but we'll have to wait and see what happens as we get a little bit better perspective and view of it. As far as any close approach asteroids go, with all the craziness going on in the world, that's all we need, right? Is a is a uh, asteroid encounter. Right now, let's see. Are we working? Try that again, see if it's up. Sometimes it's a little slow. Uh, not my internet, but for whatever reason, reason my connection to uh, the government websites. All right, we'll have to check back on that here in a minute. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, not a whole lot of severe weather in the forecast. That is good news, right? I think uh, the areas there across the south and southeast Portions of the Midwest need a little break from the severe weather, and it looks like that's going to be the case here, but uh, not going to last too long. It looks like we do have a uh, another pattern change towards a little bit deeper into April. Right about here, we get some moisture coming in here from the Gulf of Mexico, interacting uh, with the jet stream, and uh, we'll just have to watch that and see how this plays out. Either way, it's, it's springtime, right? The patterns uh, can really mix up out here and create the severe weather. Uh, for this time of year wow nothing nothing going on on the asteroid watch for whatever reason but we can always check out another site here uh, spaceweather.com has a decent little um, web page here as well here's their recent and upcoming earth asteroid encounters obviously we're past the second we've had a couple close newly discovered ones um, but far as coming up here after the 8th, 2025 GT, this one's fairly safe, 4.6 lunar distances away. I'm really not seeing anything on the map here, uh, even in the extended range here. But a lot of these are monitored asteroids uh, with some new ones in there, but they're always discovering new asteroids every single day. Um, so it's sometimes it's those that you got to watch out for. But uh, everything looks fairly safe out there for now. Uh, I don't think we have that on our, on our, uh, in our future for now. There's a comet though. Uh, let's see, amateur astronomers are monitoring a bright new comet. Comet SWAN25F. This is something I like to observe once it is somewhat visible. But uh, I'd have to break out the telescope to see it. Looks like... Uh, it is easily detectable by backyard telescopes. Um, beautiful. But uh, I'll wait for something a little bit brighter here. Let's see if that comes up here in the future as far as any uh, comet views. All right, folks. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. Just kind of a... Well, there's a couple of earthquakes there on the Barrett Station in Southern California. There's really not a whole lot happening out here right now. Um, but things can change. Have yourself a good Tuesday. We'll see you guys back out here a little bit later.